Uh, welcome, everyone. We have uh, Katrin Eisman, uh, artist, author, and Photoshop educator, interviewed today. Hello, Katrin. Hey, everybody. Uh, do you want to tell everyone a bit about yourself? I'm an author, and I'm also an educator. And uh, right now, my, my current professional position is I'm the chair of the master's program in digital photography at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Great. Great. So it's a good blend, you know, because I get to write articles and books, I get to talk about them, and then when I go to these great places, I take pictures, and then I feature them in my classes, my tutorials, and it's all one big great. I call you the Photoshop diva? I remember. But it started many years ago. Um, actually, Andrew Rodney came up with that name for me many years ago. It's almost as good as uh, the other domain I bought, which I haven't used yet, which is Lightroom Mistress. <laughs> so, Great, great. So uh, do you want to uh, show us what creative projects you've been working on and, and uh, share some slides? Absolutely. So, okay. Now, just uh, recently, I've, um, I've been honored to be the Oni Artisan Master. Right. And so what that's letting me do is I, I love the, 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 the size of the cameras, the, the weight of the cameras. And you can see here my Lightroom library. I'm more of a generalist. I mean, there's a lot of travel images. There's still life. And uh, so recently... I just uh, last year I went to uh, Cuba twice, nice. which um, and it was always sort of a goal of mine, not to show blurry pictures like that one, um, um, to try to show Cuba, you know, and explore. It. You didn't want to do the standard tourist shots, sure, so here, sure. so here's a good example. Like I did a whole series of hands, you know, because to show how hard the people work. So this is butcher. My Spanish is close to non-existent. I knew, I knew how to like say hands right. and uh, it sort of opened up, you know, I got closer to the people because in a way I'm sort of like a shy, shy person, not with, uh, you know, slow shutter speeds, speeds, you know, because a lot of people are boxers, but I just really wanted to show their dedication and their energy. Right. And so this is all me just traveling with the the Sony A7R at that time, and you know it's the same hundred. And here's a good example. I'll just stop for a moment. I would determine to like not photograph old cars. Down there, you're like you're going to photograph old cars. So it was very important for me to sort of try to do it a little differently. Um, and I and I just sort of the you know the graphics, the people. I mean, we just walked and walked and walked. Um, it's a very beautiful uh, city and country, but you also see a lot of uh, contrast with history, economics, et cetera. And so I feel very fortunate to, you know, now that the relationships are starting to normalize, that I was able to go there twice and, uh, you know, see Havana and parts of Cuba now. But also working with that camera, you know, I'm not trying to, like, sell any equipment per se, but the quality and how, and how small it is, I mean, that's one reason I went away from bigger DSLRs. After half a day, I was just exhausted. Yeah. And so they just let me walk, and, and that's just really, really important to me. And so I do a lot of, uh, you know, travel photography in that regard, and I just yep. sort of, I like doing a wide variety. Now, I myself am interested in the uh, the Sony's, and uh, you know I carry you know just a Sony RX100 when I go to art opening, art openings, and night shots, yep. and it's great. And, and I got my eye on the A6000. Right. Also know that uh, Serge Serge Romelli is also a fan of the Sony A7R as well. So yeah, exactly. And what I did with it when going, I shot, I've shot all the Canons, all the Nikon's, you know, the big ones. I always felt like when I was putting that up to my face, like I was putting this wall up. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, especially going to Cuba, I did not want that wall. And so what I did is, you know, I got the, the A7R high resolution and I put this bright pink camera strap on it. Fun. So I, I looked like a total tourist. <laughs> so I was completely ignored. That's it's got this electronic viewfinder. And what that lets me do is I can see in the viewfinder. 
know, that whole idea of stopping to look at LCD or do what people call, right. you know, chimping. Mm -hmm. Don't do it anymore. And I have my eye up at that viewfinder so much more. Nice. That some older images too. But, you know, I, I spend a lot of time out walking. And I go because of, you know, family. I go to the same places quite often. And that's good. You go revisit, relook. And you're always seeing again and trying to do things with a fresh eye. So I love seeing the world through a viewfinder. I can see the world more through a viewfinder. Nice. So, you know, the, no detail is uh, too unimportant, you know, to be overlooked. Time to look. And, you know, if you ever have that voice of, oh, this is silly, this is stupid, it's been done before. It's like, you know, you haven't done, you haven't done it before. Take the picture, you know, and then, and then see where it goes. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm happy when I have a camera in my hand and it can be, you know, any different kind of work. You know, here's one of the most classic subjects known to, you know, art world, you yeah. know, flowers. I mean, how many times we photograph them, you know, just experimenting, playing, you know, I think, I feel that focus is highly overrated. Yeah. Okay. You just sort of see what's going to happen. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Oh, you're going to delete a file. Woohoo! I think that was used on one of your book covers too, right? The last exactly. One. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, with this type of work, you know, I'm, I'm down low. I'm experimenting. I'm trying things out um, because it's a lot about how you see the world. And, you know, I'm actually showing some interpretation with these uh, images. And now I'm back at the studio with you know, someone threw out a bouquet of flowers. I'm like, I'll do something with them. Yeah, it's smart. You know, just, who knows, just do it. So. Yeah, I like the way it, you know, some of it is like subject and street, and then others are more like an abstract and the patterns. And the, like this one has a nice rhythm to it, but it's very abstract in ways too. Yeah. You know, and then, okay, I'm done. Let me do now. Okay, I'll stick them upside down into the water. You know, what happen? I don't know. You know, you I couldn't have predicted that. So, nice. you know, you just you just try it. So, I I'm just enjoying, you know, looking at the world, seeing the world, etc. You know, okay. I, in a way, I can't get enough of it. Like, I think most people get upset when like there's an airplane delay. I'm like, this is great. I can go take pictures. Yeah. You know. Right. Use so. any opportunity. Exactly. And so, I mentioned I'm shy, so I'm like in a way forcing myself, you know, to, uh, work on some portraiture, you know, try that out. It's still primarily natural light. Um, I co-teach a workshop with Greg Gorman out in California in May. And so it's a real challenge because it's like, okay, here's a beautiful occasion. You know, what are you going to do with it? That's more than, you know, a picture of a really beautiful in shape person. Right. You know, and, and learning is if you really, sp you have to spend time with the people. You, it really is a collaboration um, because that, that person's got to, you know, show even in a silhouette shot like this, you know, Jean Pierre was really into it. And so it's, it's, you know, with any project, you know, you try to surround yourself with good people and hopefully, good things will happen. So, and here, you know, completely abstract, but I just, once again, I just really like the atmosphere. Beautiful. So now what I workshop is like, okay, now I'm going to see if I can do it in the studio, you know, with other people, with light, with that quiet moment of, you know, eyes closed. Well, what else can I do? So, you know, we start, we start bringing in some props, you know, a little more meaningful. And then I'm like, what else do I have? So I'm like, oh, tables. <laughs> but you, know, you don't need expensive styling here. Okay, keep going. Like playing, you know, working with gels and it's it's all right. That's a duplicate, but it's it's uh, it's all it's all play. It's all that's the nice thing about digital. This was actually from someone else's shoot. They were shooting dancers, and I went behind the backdrop, and I'm like, these are the better pictures. So I was enjoying just shooting the silhouettes. You know. It reminds me like an abstract painting too, you know. 
Exactly. Um, so warm. I love shooting against the light. It's one of the, one of the favorite things that I want to do. It's always about the light and, you know, how it forms the person. So, I mean, it's, I'm lucky, right? It's oh, beautiful. The, the beautiful people. And I'll just, uh, it must be nice also being, you know, uh, teaching at the school of visual arts where you have so many constant flow of images that you critique. So it's like you're just flooded with kind of visual influence. Oh, it will, or said another way, I steal all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily you're really stealing, but, you know, as any teacher will tell you, the questions that they ask are like sources yeah. of inspiration. And so they're, they're, it's a constant back and forth. So, you know, there's so much that I enjoy doing that, you know, I'm, I'm always looking, listening, or, or trying to find inspiration no matter where, where I go. Um, I'm lucky, you know, I live in New York. I live right on the Hudson River, which anybody that follows Instagram knows because like there's another picture of the Hudson River but it's like you know yeah but you could say oh you know it's easy but it's interesting if you see it every day it's a challenge like okay do something new what's going right. on you know try slow shutter you know in the evening with the ferry going by you got to get out there and you have to do it this is a one of those super moon shots Oh, you did that in Photoshop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody trusts me. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, yes, I, as I met a pixel, I didn't want to change. But, you know, you got to start with, you got to start with something. You know, this is sort of like end of just like, and you can't say, oh, I'll go photograph that tomorrow. Right, so, right. You know, so I'm, I'm constantly just running out there. And it's nice to be in New York where you have so many great museums and galleries, too. So you can well, yeah, as, a, as an artist, student, you know, you have to look at a lot of work. Um, obviously, looking at work online and getting to see a lot. But one thing that's very important about photography is the idea of scale. And so right. when, you, when you go to a gallery or a museum, that's when you can understand what the artist thought about what, how the scale is important. Sure. Okay, so when people show me their portfolios on like an iPhone, it's sort of like, do you really want it to be this small? You yeah. know, making making the print is uh, still important, and how it's going to be displayed, and and the sequencing, etc. I have a quote by uh, David Lynch where he was saying, "You can't watch a movie on like an iPhone." He was like, <laughs> "Yeah, religious, you know." Yeah, I know. I, I still do like going to movies. That's for sure. So, you know, that's, I just keep, you know, trying, experimenting as an artist, you're supposed to, and it's always a challenge, you know, make your weaknesses, your strengths, which is, I like that. well, you, you sort of have to, um, I'm looking for a specific folder. Um, you, you have to do that in order to, you know, to grow. So, you know, that's why I was trying to do a little bit, a few more, um, portraits that I just duplicate everything. Oh, I just made virtual copies of everything. I, thank goodness I undid that because I was talking and mousing at the same time. <laughs> it's all right. You can just do a quick. Yeah, so, exactly. So oh, these are nice. Yeah. So this is also, I think these are probably all done with the Sony RX 100. You know, I spend my family lives in Germany, and so whenever I go and visit, I always try to come up with like a photo project. What can I do with the old photos? And but then I wanted to like I added the motion here with the leaves by actually moving them. It's not the motion blur filter, oh, you know. And here dropping that those red um, rose hips into it, you know, because the still life itself was sort of like still. Right, right. You know, so I'm, I tried to add some some motion uh, into the. This is a whole series that I just did in up in my mother of because the light was. And I'm gonna photograph it. You know, he's reminding me of uh, Joseph Cornell a bit too. That big influence, big influence. Yep. Well, he worked in Queens, and that's where I was born. So, um, 
and a big influence of our family and of, of a lot of people that do montage and collage should really look at his work because he literally worked with what he found and found in flea thrift stores and on the street yeah, you know a lot of this stuff this uh, you know yeah. spontaneous yeah. doesn't take a lot of money you know i have some spoiled fruit great let me photograph it right. you know and that's a little thing about europe you know the fruit's not it's not all full of pesticides so it actually ages yeah right you know a lot of the fruit you buy here it's like it still looks the same after a month it's very disappointing yeah well there's also that gmo stuff i get a little scared about but. exactly so i like adding the motion to it because it, it sort of takes away the whole idea of that you can actually describe your life in one one twenty-fifth of a second right so i you know i'm just having fun it's like do i know what but doing still lives and and creating these little sculptures you know is uh very creative very meditative yeah. you know because i'm creating 3d but i know i'm going to be flattening it and so that's when things change and so yeah it makes you focus on full but strong composition which is nice right? exactly well i hope i hope yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so Taking pictures and working creatively is a positive thing to do, you know, in a way it makes a better place. Yeah. It's, it's good. And I have to, you know, as an educator, I have to take, take pictures and do this every day. I can't just talk about it with my students. I can't just say, oh, you should be working harder. Right, right. You know, I have to be out there every day. It might not be in the studio, but would be you know there's no excuse because we all have the camera with us now with the phone and so every day i'm going to be viewing and trying things out i mean seriously new york's got to be one of the most photographed cities in the world yeah. so it's like how can you do it how can you see it and uh you know hopefully create good images so you got to get out there. There's no sitting at home and going, oh, no, I have to go to some exotic. I mean, okay, I'm in New York, but, the, you know, you could do this in lots of places. Oh, nice. Yeah, so these are, this is all now phone, and that's all about practicing seeing. It's, it's a constant practice. No matter what the temperature is, you know, these last two weeks have been uh, Pretty brutal. challenging. Yeah, that's all right. I wouldn't know. I'm out in Southern California. Yeah, so. thank, thanks a lot. Thanks. I appreciate that. I think it's 80 degrees today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, it's sort of done now. But that's the thing. It's, it's sort of you got to, you know, photographing nice. in the rain, it's time to take pictures. Great. You know, so. So a lot of practice, a lot of experimentation. Um, you know, sometimes I think photography is like fishing, even though I don't fish. People that fish, they they're there for hours till they get a good one, or a big fish. And it's the same thing with photography. You you got to get back into the rhythm. You have to try it out. You have to like get warmed up. But for a while, I notice people sort of keep they start where they stop the last time. So you know it's an ongoing process. Yeah, great. It's a great series. A series of images. Well, it's. Different yeah. series. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's just, you know, and I, I do do some enhancement. You know, my go-to app on the phone is Snapseed. The update uh, recently released, Oculus. It's amazing how, how good it is. Um, oh. And so, and now back to like Sony, what's great, a number of other manufacturers is, you know, you can wirelessly transmit from even the RX100 to your phone. Yeah. And so I have advantage of, you know, obviously better optics, a variety of lenses, and still have the Snapseed, the instant sharing. And I, I like that. I like the connection from a, a high quality camera to the phone because that's, I'm walking around with a dark room in my pocket. Sure. You know, and that's, that's, you know, it's very, it's actually intoxicating, you know, to think about what we have you know in a little square that you can put away. exactly <laughs> so we're very fortunate i mean i'm not I, I appreciate it every day 
and every day my husband and I saying like we are so yeah nice time know. to be. yeah it's a great time to be involved with photography right. so I can just keep this running if you have any other questions or want yeah, to know anything go. yeah there's such a great variety um, should we go on with some of the other questions though um, sure so yeah love these though great great photographs great compositions um, so can you recall one of your favorite creative projects ever? Yeah, um, and I think that what I, my favorites are always the ones where I have very clear parameters. Um, and so this was something I did for a, uh, was an artist in residence in a private girls' school in Los Angeles. Mm. And I'm gonna have to start at the end to sort of show why I did something. So there's this big, ignore that there's actually pictures, artwork on the wall, on the right now there's this big atrium and if you imagine behind you and you can see here there's white walls did you want to do like lights out just a bigger yeah. view of it yeah, okay, yeah. Right. okay. Right. so they wanted me to put the wall artwork on these white walls that are in the way behind me right now but i was so drawn to these windows as frames and these trees out here that when i had first viewed the gallery had just been completely um uh you know cut you know, after the spring, they cut those trees down so they stay sort of stumpy. And so, what I was like going, I don't want, I don't want to use the walls. I want to use the windows as frames. And I'm going to talk about my relationship with nature, which they were like, really? And I'm like, yep. So I sort of, I turned the entire gallery on its head. Instead of using the walls, I used the windows. And yeah, so, I like that interactivity of the real world. And and let me start at the beginning. Okay. Exactly. So it should just start anyway. I'll just do whatever it wants. There we go. So what I did is I photographed myself with a, I, I was able to borrow a phase back and photograph myself and myself in black and white light. So I had always had about an hour to shoot. Nice. And then using the archives, imposed myself to nature. And so, I knew that these were going to be printed four by four feet on here and then in those big squares. And, and so, you know, it's all about identity, nature, death in my work. Um, and there's more death. So, well, we're all mortal. Right. Sure. And what was interesting was when we hung these, what happened is the students ended up practically moving into the space and they would just hung out there because they'd never really seen that space used differently. Excellent. And uh, it turned into, as we can see here, see here, those, these turned in, these look like big giant slides. Yeah. The images would crawl along the ground um, over the course of the day because of the um, sunlight. Yeah, you brought new life to that area. Nice. Exactly. So I, I mean, that was sort of a prize to have this effect. And this was where again? Where is the? This is in La, in uh, Los Angeles, the uh, Marlboro Marlboro Private School for Girls. Um, and that's one. Of the, why am I saying this? Is one of my favorite creative projects because I had very tight parameters, mm -hmm. and I like working in tight parameters. So. I had another opportunity to have a, a show up in um, at Keene State College, in New Hampshire, and what they wanted me to do was, we want you to do a show with composites, and I was sort of like, would you like tell Van Gogh we want you to do X for your exhibit? And so I was sort of like, okay, I'll do composites, but I'm not going to do them in Photoshop. And so what I did was all of these images are single shots, but I worked with mirrors. Oh. So, so I'm on to mirrors and working outside. And so I love having these tight parameters. Yeah, that's a nice creative challenge. I like that. I like that. Exactly. Because I just finished the first edition of the masking book, and the last thing I wanted to do was more masking. <laughs> so, so this is all. these are all single exposures. And, and I'm very interested in nature. And this was like the idea of, you know, ocean, sea life, you know, once again, 
the influence of the Hudson River, you know, because I would see the water. And so give me a parameter and I'm happy. Nice. And that's, it's, it's, it's happened a few times. Um, I was fortunate enough to be invited to on a, uh, when Lightroom was being developed, they and in Australia, Adobe did. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm there with literally the best landscape for landscape photographers in the world. There was a book that came out, right? Yes. There was a book by, uh, Michael Ayland. That's it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm there with National Geographic photographic photographers, landscape photographers. And I'm like, that's not what, and so I was very interested in the history of Tasmania. So all these bones you see are a uh, whale from whale bones. Hmm. And so I set up this little studio outside and, and photographed them because back to nature, you know, what we've done with nature and against these whales. And then these little still lives here, I noticed that about 60% of Tasmania's garbage and recycling everywhere, everything was recycled and everything was clean. And so I literally went to the town dump, wanted to see how they did it. And what happened was thrown out, there's a volunteers that sort through the trash and anything that can be salvaged is sold for like a quarter, you know, sort of like wow. a thrift store. And so I had a whole day there going through things and finding relationships. So, you nice. know, I found, you know, you know, these four, you know, ping pong tab tables. I found all these scales and just did these still eyes with them. And I really, really enjoyed that. Now, this one's a little different. Um, you know, these are all beer and alcohol cans because whenever we went out driving, everybody would say, be careful about the wildlife, be careful of the road, careful of the roadkill. So I'm going to like, I'm going to, I'm going to go find roadkill. I actually wanted to find dead animals. <laughs> I'm gonna and I I walked the streets and it was I never found animals but literally every three to four feet I found cans of alcohol. There's the roadkill. Yeah, right. So I spent like a whole day, you know, and I'm working with the Hasselblad in a phase one back, photographing cans, and that's how I like working. I like working, you know, conceptually, and in these um, groups of images. These remind me a bit, you know, with the kind of rhythm of the abstract found objects. Reminds me a bit of like Rauschenberg. Well, yeah, great influence in Rauschenberg yeah. in terms of, you know, he was one of the first people to actually use found objects. I mean, right. and and create really, really. So, you know, and I studied I studied biology as an undergrad, and so, and. Of course, I grew up in the 60s and 70s where the ecology movie mo movement was starting. Okay. So everything that we've done to the landscape and the world and the climate, you know, weighs on me. So I have to put it into the photography. Yeah, such great yeah. work. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let me show you. This is going to – I don't want to take – I'm taking over. But I also want to show real quickly the uh, four uh, digital. Okay, to, to sort of show that before Photoshop, I was already creating images like in camera that look like they were um, Photoshopped. And I think that's sort of important that, you know, people always think, oh, yeah, it, it's all Photoshop. And it's like, no, it's not really Photoshop. It's how you actually see the world. Right. It's how you interpret it and how I was never interested in like, showing something the way it really looked, but always interpreting it. So here's me running naked through the mall, which is very funny because people actually thought I did it, even though I'm not 18 inches <laughs> tall. So uh, it, it's it's all this interpretation, you know, in camera. I think and Jerry Olsman was pretty intense with that stuff too, or like everyone thought that was Photoshop. Yeah, well, he graduated from, graduated from this, was born. Oh, that's wild. So uh, Jerry Olsman is one of the most important photographer and artist of the 20th century and still working in the darkroom almost every day now. Great. Yeah. So and I'm Maggie. always, I'm going to build up on your references just because I think they're so important. Yeah. And Maggie yeah. Taylor, his wife. Does yep. Absolutely. Good, good friends. Job. And, you know, they work very hard and, and every, you have to work every day, 
you know, to try these things out. This is through, you know, Christmas tree tinsel. So, you know, it's all trying things out. I mean, the thing is you can have an idea. It's just an idea. You have to actually do it. You have to try it out. And then doing it will teach you what the next step is. So you're a, lot of, a lot of your abstract work also reminds me of like good music CD covers. And I think of like old talking heads. And, <laughs> you know. No, the, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, so, great. Yeah, there's just lots of stuff going on. Oh, speaking of death, why not, right? I spent a lot of time in, in cemeteries, um, maybe because it's quiet. This is in the States or? The oh, whenever I travel, wherever I go, yeah. be it, you know, Russia, Cuba, Europe, right. Paris, um, you know, it's it's just being aware. We have a lot of time on this planet, you know, and then the, the, we can we can make a lot of things, but the only thing we can't make, we cannot make time. Yeah. So, right. you know, I am guilty of putting a lot, I will say, wasting a lot of time on social media. And sometimes at night I'm like, what the heck did I do today? You know, and so it's amazing how, what people are remembered by and, and how we see that different cultures celebrate death it's, it's all i'm i'm just completely amazed by it yeah so you know, I've, I've been accused of being a necrophiliac which i am not <laughs> i am not but i think that there's a tremendous beauty you know, in, great. in a lot of these memorials so you know honor honor the people and uh and knowing where we came from i had to throw some philosophy into any interview i do sure right yeah. Excellent. So, um, now, uh, so what future projects uh, would you like to work on or are working on? Well, I'm going to show you. I okay. hope people will be happy about this. <laughs> finally uh, updating the retouching book. Third edition, right? This is a third edition. We're finally working on the fourth edition. Yay! These are all the notes I've I've taken over the and stuck in here. And um, there's a there's a woman that I heard way back in San Francisco, uh, Lori. Yeah. Lori uh, Zerbeles, I think is her last oh, name. Oh, absolutely. Agree. She's in here. Yeah. I really. tutored her in Photoshop, and she used to be a traditional retoucher in the yeah. lab. And then all of a sudden, I saw her work was in your book, and I was like, I felt kind of showed her how to use Photoshop, and all of a sudden, she's. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah, she's great. Absolutely, it does good work. So yeah. that's what I'm going to be working on um, with uh, partially a labor of love. Sure. But it's it's time to uh, time to update. And, you know, there's a, the one thing that I always try to put in my books is not just, you know, how to do something. I mean, because you could Google how to use the healing brush. Right, right. You know, I can't compete against 367 tips on that yeah. but also why you do something how to approach a project what are the important issues to take into consideration you know yes. some thought processes yeah that book's very th that book, yeah. so that's you're looking at my summer <laughs> and, uh, any, any special projects with school visual arts or